Not today, thank you. Cause I'm gonna wash him. That's why not today, thank you. Oh, yeah. Look at these dirty yeah, women. I wonder how that mud can clear up here on the twentieth floor. That guy thinks he's gonna ruin my racket, hey? Hmm. Hey, let me show you the real way to wash a window. I'll wash him. <laughs> Oh, right in the eye. Oh, I can't see. Oh, oh. Ah, you're out of date with that stuff. Let me show you how we modern use it. Put a little whipped cream on the window. There you are. Hey, shrimp, get an eye full of this. There's some real window clear. You don't say. You look like a monkey on a string to me. Oh, hey, I'm hanging in the healthy tool. Hey, you'll have to knock somebody off something. Uh, ah, that's kindergarten stuff. Will you get a load of this with me suspenders? I'll show you how to do it. Ooh, ooh. I do it in swing time, you see. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah. watch this. Yeah, I'm watching <laughs> you, but of course I don't see anything yet. Oh! 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 oh. oh. oh I'm falling, I'm falling. Oh! Oh! Uh, 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 uh. Whoa! Hey! Hey, my head's caught, I can't get out. Oh! Hey, get me out of here, somebody. Hey, you give me a pain in the neck, you. Oh! 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 Why, you little. Oh, the head, I saw my head out. Oh, right, right, huh? Well, I think that's the end. Wow! Wait, wait, give me that sledgehammer. Oh, no, 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 no,
by the sailor man. Fifty miles are here. We've got one chance. If I can clear the top of that mountain, we might be able to glide to a landing on the other side. the last minute change in our plans. Have you notified the members of the Saifan Council to assemble? They are waiting for you at the temple. Gentlemen of the Saifan. You will be gratified to learn that I have secured the Dalai Scroll, second link to the chain that will lead us to the location of Genghis Khan's tomb and the sacred scepter. The tribesmen are ripe for revolt now, but unless we can bring in the scepter... Within a few weeks, I shall be in possession of the scepter, and I shall lead the tribesmen in a revolt that will sweep every white enemy from the continent of Asia. The manuscript I have just obtained indicates another scroll, third link in the chain that will lead us to the location of the lost tomb. I plan to secure this scroll at once. I realize we're both fortunate to be alive, but I still feel responsible for the loss of the scroll. Oh, don't be too downhearted. We haven't really lost it. What do you mean? We took the precaution of having a photostatic copy made of it before you gave it to Fu Manchu. 
You did? Where is it? We finally got Professor Humphrey to translate it for us. Uh, Randolph has the copy. Sir Nayland. It seems that the utmost caution was exercised in safeguarding the tomb of Genghis Khan. You mean this has been a wild goose chase? Well, not at all. Now, this manuscript does give us a clue to the document that will lead us to the tomb. A document that was hidden away in the tomb of Kelba Khan. Why, all the documents from Kelba Khan's tomb were brought to this country. That is correct. They're in the possession of Dr. Chang, an oriental importer in this city. Now, the paper you want is undoubtedly there, and you should have no trouble in getting a copy of it. Well, neither will Fu Manchu. Oh, yes, Sir Nayland, I have the entire Kelba Khan collection. We've just found out that one of those papers is extremely important, and that Fu Manchu may attempt to get it from you. Please take every precaution to protect it. We'll be down as quickly as possible. Very good, Sir Nayland. Goodbye. I see we arrived just in time, Dr. Cheng. Please get me that Kelba Khan document at once. Your fame precedes you, Dr. Fu Manchu. I have promised the document to someone else. You forced me into a most distasteful act. Tie him up. Don't you think, Dr. Chang? As you can see, your life is literally hanging by a thread. Loci, though usually most reliable when handling a knife, is not infallible. He might strike the wrong chord. And now, Dear Dr. Cheng, kindly oblige me by telling me where this document is. You are very stubborn, my dear doctor. This is your final demonstration, Dr. Chang. Are you still not convinced that I will stop at nothing to get that document? Have you changed your mind, Dr. Chang? meant for us. Dr. Chang! He's getting away! It's too late to stop him now. Let's take care of Dr. Chang. 
May we see the document now, Dr. Chang? Certainly. But it won't be necessary. I am thoroughly familiar with its contents. Splendid. What does it say? It refers to an inscription in the Temple of the Blind Dragon, which can only be translated with the addition of the Kardak segment. The Kardak segment was taken from the temple and brought to this country. It is now in the possession of Mr. Ezra Howard at his country estate in Sonoma. I'll call Mr. Howard at once. I'm afraid that is impossible. Mr. Howard is very eccentric. He lives like a hermit on that estate and allows no phone. We can still drive up there. Right. Wu oh, Manchu! We'll contact you later, Dr. Chang. Mr. Parker. <laughs> I welcome your arrival, Mr. Parker. You see, the Dacoit died before he could give me any information. Now, you can tell me what was in the Kelba Khan manuscript. Dr. Chang gave you my answer. His answer would have been otherwise had you not arrived when you did. I am certain you will not be so fortunate. devices for extracting information from stubborn witnesses. But I'm honoring you by the use of an arrangement invented by one of your own countrymen. You're undoubtedly familiar with the admirable writings of Edgar Allan Poe, so you will have no difficulty in recognizing this device described in his short story, The Pit and the Pendulum. see how effectively this machine works, you will, I trust, be persuaded to give me the information I require. I require of you is such a small matter 
and the price to you so great. I am certain you will see the wisdom of changing your decision. to get one shot off. Moore? Don Moore. Notify the chaplain? Chief's office? Yes, sir. DA? Yes, sir. Get with the cab. Apparently, the cab driver panicked after he rammed that rig. Maybe. It still isn't much of a reason for Moore to be dead. I want lots of coverage on this, Dave. A gun certainly knocks out the panic theory. Possibly use that gun on more of the cab and have been a handier weapon. 
Sure looks that way, Ben. Why? Fred! That's too bad about Moore. We heard most of it while we were rolling. Anything to add? Well, nothing from the truck driver. The other witness is Philip Dressler of the San Francisco Opera Company. Just got in on the Ansonia. Dressler says a porter at Pier 41 took his bag, threw it in this cab, porter disappeared, and the cab dug out fast. Witnesses corroborated the story. That Dressler's bag? Yeah. We'll book it for evidence. Run it through the lab for prints. This Dressler seems pretty reputable. You don't think his bag means anything, do you? I don't know what to think. The whole case doesn't add up. What about this cab driver, Fred? You make him? No, no ID, wallet, nothing. Call the cab company, you got to run down on the cab. It's possibly hot. Well, and run that gun, too. When the coroner arrives, tell him we want to set his prints as soon as we can get him. Run him through the bureau, can't identify him, we'll get an FBI make on him. All right, Ben. See you, Fred. I see this cab's coming at me like a suicide's back in style. Are you Mr. Dressler? Yes, that's right. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Inspector Quine. How do you do, gentlemen? Well, it's unfortunate we have to meet under these awful circumstances, I know. We meet a lot of people under unpleasant circumstances, Mr. Dressler. I understand that that bag in that cab belongs to you. That's correct, sir. Mind describing the contents for us? Not at all. There's really nothing of value in the bag, some personal things and a few knickknacks I picked up in Hong Kong. What kind of knickknacks? Oh, a few ebony pieces and a rather, rather unusual statuette. I, I think that's about it. Is the statuette very valuable? You mean valuable enough to have this happen? We're looking for some kind of a motive. I, I only paid $20 for it. Now, you told Inspector Asher this porter took your bag, threw it in a taxi cab, and the cab took off without waiting for you. Is that's that right? absolutely right, sir. You know, stealing a bag that's worth nothing, it, well, it seems pretty senseless, doesn't it? It would be, except two people are dead. Would you recognize this porter if you saw him again? Possibly, possibly not. I'd, I'd be glad to try, though. We'd appreciate it, Mr. Dressler. What is your address? 3960 Lake Street. Phone, Seabright, 10711. We might be calling on you. Well, I'll be at the Opera House most of the afternoon. All right, Mr. Dressler, that'll be all for now, thanks. What about my bag? Well, we'll have to hold it for a while. The crime lab will want to go over for fingerprints and so on. Yes, of course. Well, good day, gentlemen. Good day. Why, Ben? No rhyme, no reason. Yet Don Moore is dead. Uh-uh. The gun's as dead as your cab driver, fellas. I'm sorry. We can usually bring the serial number right out, no matter how well it's been filed down. But in this case, it's been completely gouged out, probably by a gunsmith. Somebody sure wanted to guarantee it couldn't be traced. Well, it's a pro's gun, all right. Lab Thompson speaking. Yeah, yeah, he's right here, Ben. Guthrie. Well, you did fine. Who? What does his rap sheet show? Try and confirm his last address and let us know, will you? All right, thanks. The B of I made the cab driver. The coroner got the prints right over there. His name is James Sanford Jenkins, nicknamed Lefty. What are his priors? His rap sheet shows his last big fall was at Q. Did five years on a 211 robbery. Drove the getaway car on a soft later back job. Supposed to be one of the best wheelmen on the coast. Maybe we're getting somewhere. No. Did you get any prints off Dressler's bag? Yeah, we left it a good clear set, but they don't match up with anything we have here. Well, maybe they will later when we get the FBI make. Hey, now. She shows up hollow under the light, and there's something inside. Sure, it's heroin. Give it the marquee reagent test. All right. If that's the pure stuff, there's enough in there to fix every addict in San Francisco for the next two weeks. And after it's cut, it'll be worth over $100,000. 
What was it Dressler said? Just a few knickknacks? We'll get him in here fast. No, Al, we'll go and talk to him at the opera house. Oh? Well, how will we handle it? We'll soft pedal it. We won't tip. Thompson, I want a dummy package of milk sugar in that same wrapping and put the statuette together exactly the way it was. Okay. Then the plan is that we let Dressler make the delivery if he's guilty. Well, obviously, this is a big narcotic smuggling operation. There's more than one man responsible for Don Moore's death. But I want to get them all. in here to mark and photograph. We might get a record of it for evidence. Yeah, but suppose Dressler spots our marks on these items. That'll throw the whole plan out the window, won't it? I don't think so. Well, if our friend Dressler can spot police identification marks, at least we'll know one thing about him. And what's that? He's guilty. Yes? Oh, gentlemen, I didn't expect to see you so soon. I see you brought my bag. Thank you very much. Yes, we want to talk to you about the porter that took it. Do you think you could identify him? I don't know, possibly. We'd appreciate it if you'd come down to the Hall of Justice tomorrow morning at 9 and take a look at the porters who worked the Ansonia dock in the lineup. You might be able to recognize the man who took the bag and threw it in the cab. Yes, I'd, I'd be glad to. Good. Oh, there's one thing more, Mr. Dressler. We'll have to check the contents of the bag with you. We'd like to be sure nothing's missing before we release it. Of course, of course. Oh, do you mind? I think over on the table we'll have a little more room. Sure. Thank you very much. You know, I still don't know why anyone would want to steal this bag. Let's see. Yes, everything seems to be here all right. Here's an interesting item. Yes, I found that in a curio shop in Hong Kong. Beautiful carving, isn't it? You know, it's amazing the buys you can still find, but you do have to know your merchandise. I can well imagine. Now, here's a case in point. Day I was leaving Hong Kong, an Oriental came to my room with this. Said one of the local antique merchants thought I might be interested. Well, when he told me the price, I was. How much did you say you paid for that again? Twenty dollars, can you imagine? Must be four or five hundred years old. Certainly sounds like a great buy. What would you say it's worth here? Well, if I were interested in selling it, I'm sure I'd get a great deal more than I paid for it. Well, thanks, Mr. Dressler. See you at the lineup tomorrow morning. Oh, yes, yes of course. Good, Good day, Mr. Dressler. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I still think we should have booked him on possession, Ben, and then turned him over to customs on the smuggling rack. Both cases seem open and shut. Maybe they are, but if Dressler's involved with a narcotics ring, he's more good to us out on the street. We can pick him up any time. These smuggling heroines, sooner or later, is going to have to try and make contact with his connection here. Inspector's operator. Inspector Asher, please. Fred, Ben, we just left Dressler at the Opera House. I want a 24-hour tail on him and his house staked out. That's right. And I want all the porters who are on the Ansonia dock today. Brought in tomorrow morning for the lineup. Well, ask them if they'll cooperate, but I want them there. Well, if you want us, we'll be in Chester McPhee's office at the Customs House. Yeah. Two men killed this morning. One of them was a police officer named Don Moore. 
I'm sorry, then. So am I, because the bag was cleared through customs. Well, what was the contraband? A quarter kilo of heroin, concealed in an oriental statuette. That's a lot of junk to miss, isn't it? I don't want to see any of the boys get killed, especially through someone else's carelessness. Well, take it easy, Pat. Ben feels pretty badly about this, Chet. I know, Alan. I don't blame him. Approximately 130 million people are cleared through customs nationwide every year. My baby is the biggest port on the coast. Come here, Ben. I want to show you something. Now, this area is the chief target in the country for running in narcotics. 4,500 ships a year, almost 400 a month, come into this port. That's about one million people annually. My men are the best in the business, but there are just not enough of them to go around. There are too many loopholes. And that's why now and then we miss a big one. I'm sorry, Chip. Maybe we can help each other on this. Well, what's your rundown, Ben? Well, the bag belonged to a man named Dressler, Philip Dressler. He came in on the Insonia this morning. Philip Dressler? Well, he'd never risk his reputation by being involved with narcotics, and he certainly doesn't need money. Oh, we've interrogated him, of course, without tipping him. He tells a pretty straight story. Said he bought the statuette from an unidentified Oriental in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. How'd you handle it? We replaced the heroin with a dummy shipment, then returned the statuette and the bag to him. But we have Dresser under 24-hour stakeout now. Well, it sounds like the usual M.O. You've run across it before? Tourist. Reputable travelers are being used as innocent smugglers. And I'd say that's what happened to Dressler. A shipment of heroin is planted on him. He brings the stuff in through customs, doesn't suspect a thing. Once past us, his bags get stolen. It's just that simple. How can a handful of agents check out every single tourist that goes through? Precisely. Oh, sure, we get tips from overseas about narcotic shipments, and we nab them just as soon as they hit port. And we know who the regular runners are and which seamen are suspect. But where do you look if every tourist who comes in is a potential runner? This man's first long fall was in 46. He did three and a half in Q on a 211. In 50, he was back in, same conviction. Now he's finally hit bottom. All right, get out, all of you. You all know about Officer Don Moore being deliberately run down and killed yesterday by a cab driver known as Lefty Jenkins. Now, we hope this lineup will show up the porter who worked with Jenkins. Mr. Philip Dressler, who saw the porter, is sitting in with us this morning while we run through the 31 porters who worked for the Ansonia steamship lines. All right, bring on the line. Okay, boys, this way. Right up the stairs. Move a little farther down, please. That's it. Now spread out. We thank you, gentlemen, for your cooperation. We know it isn't pleasant to be standing up there like goldfish in a bowl. Look, uh, we don't mind cooperating, but uh, let's get it over with. This is costing us money. We'll get it over with just as fast as possible. Now, if you'll all straighten up and face forward, please. Now, first man, step forward. Now, turn to your right, please. No, to the right. That's it. Now to the left. Okay, step back. Next man forward, please. Down the stairs. Step back, please. Thank you. Next man. Okay, to your left. Fine, step back. Next man. Step back. Third man. Would you remove your glasses, please? Thank you. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Step down, boys. All right, thank you. Step back. Next man. Turn to your right. That's it. Now to the left. All right, step back. Now the last man followed, please. Turn to your right. And to your left. Okay, step back, please. Okay, we want to thank you for your cooperation. That's all, Tom.
Well, that's it for the day. I'm sorry, but I, I just wasn't sure. Well, none of them came even close. Yes and no. You know what I mean? Well, it's, it's like a waiter. You order lunch and you just concentrate on the menu. No one ever remembers what his waiter looks like. Same thing yesterday with that porter. I never did get a good look at him. Well, thanks very much for coming down. Will you see Mr. Dressler gets home, Fred? All right. Finally ran down Lefty Jenkins' address, 11 Kent Street. Me, I'll be downstairs. Thanks. Well, Jenkins certainly had a great spot here for a Halloween party. Yeah, no self respecting witch would bring a broom into this trap. report will probably show the usual number of needle marks. You know, if Jenkins had a big habit, that could account for a wheel man with his reputation piling into that rig on a routine job. Might have needed to fix pretty bad, lost his control, lost his coordination. You know, one thing bothers me, though. What's that? Why a well-organized operation would hire a junkie as a wheel man? You know, that could be the mistake that'll nail him, Ben. Folsom's full of mistakes. Let's crawl the rest of this place and then get out of here. I'm in favor of that. I wonder where that lab man is. He ought to be here by now. If this mark is in our file, it'll give us one more guy to talk to about Jenkins and his playmates. His laundry man. The relationship between Jenkins and a laundry man is purely coincidental. Well, there's a funny thing about this calendar. Two days are circled, and one is yesterday. Yesterday? That's the day Jenkins got himself killed. And maybe he was psychic. What's the other? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Hey, you suppose he was scheduled for a repeat in order to pick up another dope shipment for tomorrow? 901 just came over the air for you as we were driving up, Ben. Call your office. All right, thanks, Maury. Go over the whole place thoroughly and let me know if you come up with anything. Right. See you, Mark. Okay. Okay, we'll cover it. Coast Guard just found a John Doe in the bay. They're bringing the body in now. He's dressed in a porter's uniform. Oh. He's one of the porters we saw in the lineup, all right. Sure, bet he's been murdered. They're eliminating each other, all right. But for every one you get rid of, there's two more ready and waiting. Fasten your seatbelts, please. We're coming in now, sir. Would you mind extinguishing your cigarette? We're coming in now, sir. Would you fasten your seatbelts, please? Please fasten your seatbelts. Case. Oh. Julia, you take this whole business about the subjunctive. I don't know. All right, Dancer. All right, what's so difficult about the subjunctive? Well, you take this, for instance. If I was you, you know? Mm -hmm. That's all wrong. It says here, if I were you. How far can you go with this special stuff? It sets you up, Dancer. It 
it sets you up. Remember that. How many characters you know hang around street corners can say, if I were you? How many, huh? If I were you. If I were you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see. It's going to be a good day. Real good one, I can feel it. It's going to be a tight one, Julian. That's what it's going to be. In and out. No dancer. It's going to be a good one. Uh, look, are you a dancer? Who are you? I'm McLean, you know. Sandy McLean? I don't know any McLean. Look, you see, Jenkins got himself killed. So? So he's out. I mean, it's just as simple as that. Look, I brought the car along. Would you like to take a look at it? What car? The car we're going to use. How do you like it? How does he like what? The car. Who are you? He says McLean. What do you want? I'm your wheelman. Wheelman? Yeah, I'm going to drive you, you know, on the job. Job? Why, we're here to see the sights. What sights? What's the matter? You think I'm a cop or something? Why don't you call our people? Yeah, yeah. I'll call Chicago. Chicago? Now, wait a minute. I was told you guys were from Miami. Yeah, you know, I could believe it with them tans. You got a lucky sense of geography, my friend. Maybe. Why don't you give us a name? Lasky? Lasky sent you. OK. I don't like the car. I like my wheels stored in a prepared drop. I like them kept under cover till I'm ready. I want my plates snatched not more than one hour before I move. Return it. It's too new. Look, you don't get it. You see, I rented this car with a fake set of credit cards, a phony driver's license. And I fix it up all by myself so nobody's going to catch us. Because she's so souped up, nobody can catch us. Maybe the clerk will remember you. Nah. Chance in a thousand. It's one chance too many. It's your mug in the lineup, not ours, if you get caught. We got a cool car for a change. I'd like to meet our employer. This spread, all rented. No check-in, no luggage, no bellhops remembering how much you tipped them. That's sharp. I got your money. You gonna count it? Dancer never counts. Nobody ever gave us a short count yet. Well, it, it could be the porter who stole my bag. Are you sure? Well, I hate to say yes and then find that the man who was responsible was still at large. Yes, yeah, sure. Would it help your memory at all to know if the fingerprints we found in your grip match the fingerprints of that man in there? Do they? They do. Well, then, I guess that's it. Yes, he does look like the man at that. Who was he? His name's Blinky Sims. Has a long record with the FBI. How was he killed? 
Someone gave him a shot that was hot. Huh? If Blinky was on heroin, he was probably promised a fix for stealing your bag. Instead, he got a hot shot, a deadly poison injected directly into the bloodstream. Well, thanks very much for coming down, Mr. Dressler. This has all been quite upsetting, gentlemen, but if you need me for anything else, please call me. Mm -hmm. I don't like Mr. Philip Dressler. He's too smooth. Well, like him or not, he's clean as a plaster saint as far as we're concerned right now. How does it feel to make five G's in one day? Dancer derives no particular feeling from it. Oh, no, not much. <laughs> I've been watching you, McLean. You've been coming on too big. I don't like that. Look, I just... Please, we prefer as little conversation as possible from outsiders. Dancer works better that way. You didn't know before. Now you do. Where do we meet this guy? Pacific Docks, straight ahead. He's wearing horn rim glasses, ain't he? He's wearing a trench coat, ain't he, with a collar turned down? Now it's got to be him, because who wears a trench coat with a collar turned down? That's Staples, huh? I knew a guy like him once. No, you didn't. There's never been a guy like Dancer. He's a wonderful, pure pathological study. A psychopath with no inhibitions. Lasky sent me. Wow. Right on time. I'm always on time. They're due to get off the boat pretty soon. I'll point out the marks to you. You see, Dancer is an addict. An addict with a real big habit. H like in heroin, huh? H like in hate. Oh? Well, I tell you, you don't chill me none. Hmm. Is hey, it bad enough Dancer's got a rough job? We have to be saddled with a cripple, too? Listen, Dipso. If I ever see you with a bottle, if okay. I even smell it... Okay, okay, okay. Look, I... I drive better with it, you know. I... I think better, too. It's just like a medicine for my mind. Your prescription's just been canceled. Two of the three parties we want are passengers. The other one's in the crew. So? The man told me to deliver it to you. What you pick up, you put in it. How'd I make the pass? At 4 o'clock today, you're in Sutro's Museum. You're at the maritime exhibit. You got that pouch. You see a ship's binnacle at the end of the room. It's got a sliding panel behind it. You slide it open, put that pouch inside. You close it. You do this so nobody sees you. That's all. You got a time spread, but you got to be out of Sutro's no later than five after four. Want me to repeat? Pouch will be picked up at five after four. All I know is you got to be out of that place by now. You're repeating yourself. Pretty neat operation, huh? But then it figures. The man's a very neat type. Here they come. 
There. The tall man in the hover. The lady in the white hat. The name is Sanders. They live at 9020 Jackson, private residence. Sanders, 9020 Jackson. Better write it down. I said, hadn't you better write it down? I never write anything down. I hope you know what. They got two in help. An Oriental houseboy and a maid named Elsie. Elsie wears a hearing aid. The stuff is packed in the handles of a set of ivory and silver flatware they bought in Bangkok. There. The lady and the kid. Dorothy Bradshaw and her daughter Cindy. Is she a carrier? Those are the brakes. A Tokyo connection fingered her. She bought a doll for the kid. The stuff's in the doll. Eighth of a kilo of the purest. Like the rest, she's a carrier and doesn't know. How can you finger these people? You've never seen them before. I saw their photographs. They were airmailed to me from Hong Kong. No chance of a mistake? The man don't make mistakes. So she's a carrier. It's too bad, lady. She's stopping at the Mark Hopkins. The last one's still aboard. We can see him from over there. He's one of the crew. That's Warner coming down on that thing. He's carrying a shipment of the Tang Dynasty horse. All you gotta do is ask him for it. He was told to deliver it himself to a Mr. Evans. Your Evans. Just comes breezing in with a package of stuff under his arm? A clean cut kid like that? You think Customs got enough men to frisk everybody 100%? Plus, he doesn't know it's in the horse. He's strictly a pigeon. One of the man's Hong Kong suppliers set him up. Where do I make my meat with him? He was told that Mr. Evans would contact him at the Siemens Club. <laughs> While my job is done. Evans. You mind if I ask you something? Ask. Ah, never mind. Ask. No offense, you understand. I'm just gonna ask, what makes a guy like you tick? I had an old man once. Well, most people do. I never met one. I'll see you around, Finger. This is at four. What's that? It's the siren on top of the ferry building. Blows three times a day, just like now. Eight o'clock in the morning, 12 noon, 4.30. <laughs> like I told you, Julian, this is going to be a tough one. In and out. And I say it's going to be a smooth one. The pass is at four. When the siren blows at 4.30, we'll be all finished, so relax. Now, what's your procedure? I want to look the ground over. 2090 Jackson, the Mark Hopkins, and the Siemens Club, in that order. Hi. Just got off a ship. Filthy. I'd like a steam. All right, you'll find some towels down by the steam room. Uh, thanks. Oh, and say, will you tell the operator I'm expecting a call from a Mr. Evans? Larry Warner's the name. Sure, Mr. Warner. Thanks. calling Larry Warner. I'll come by.
Mr. Warner? Warner? Here. I'm Evans. How about a steam? What? How about a steam? Got the room all to myself. Sure, why not? Steam. Don't stay in too long. It opens the pores. <laughs> That's a yuck. Yuck? Okay, okay, that's amusing. Better, much better. Yuck's a crude word. I'll hang up your things. Hey, you like it thick, don't you? Who likes it thin? I don't like it when I can't see who I'm talking to. Whom? My friend in Hong Kong said you were top collector of Tang Dynasty in this country. He ought to know. Shows you what a small world this is. Well, I always liked Chinese art, so I'm standing in front of the store window in Hong Kong. And the guy who owns the store said, come on in. We hit it off. He put me up at his house, fed me, got me on a ship's crew. He asked me to bring it in for you. Said it was very rare. He was afraid it would get chipped if he sent it by freight. I took good care of it, Mr. Evans. Real good care. You got it here? Yeah, upstairs. You better have steam. We'll go upstairs and get it now. No, no, kid. You stay here and take some more steam. I'll run up and get the horse. What's your room number? Oh, that's okay. I want to come along. I'm right upstairs, 604. You just tell me where the key is, and I'll. No, leave. there are no keys here. This is the Siemens Club. People trust each other. Like you. You trust me, don't you? I do. Now, you think I was born yesterday? You no more a collector of. Antiques than I am. I found out what's really inside that horse. Well, you took a chance smuggling that stuff into the country, kid. Yeah. Never broke a law in my life. Nobody would ever figure me to do anything wrong. So what's now? So? I'm broke, that's all. Just B-R-O-K-E. But if you give me, uh, say, a thousand dollars, we could both forget I know anything. You think that'll about cover it? Why be greedy? Repairman's in there, boys. Be about five minutes. Let's go for a swim. Two kids tried to get in. They got a good look at me. We better leave separately. Okay. Room 604. It's unlocked. Get the junk out of the horse while I dress. In the car in three minutes. Okay. said, why be greedy? Why be greedy? Those were his last words. Why be greedy? That'll print well for an epitaph. Thanks. OK, OK, stop drooling. Get going, Julia. Yeah. Let me have an element from this angle, huh? Any closer? Well, how soon can I get the autopsy report? Today, sometime. Oh, that's a help. Don't commit yourself. Ben, you've known me for 15 years. You know you don't have to push me. Well, I want to get that slug as soon as possible run a ballistics make on it. No. You through with him? No. Ben? Nobody heard a shot, including a half dozen kids that have been hanging around the locker room all morning. Could have been a silencer. All right, boys. Would you mind giving us a run down the story again, please? Well, there's not much to run. Warner came in for a steam, said he was expecting a call from a guy named uh, Evans. So I relayed it to the switchboard. Well, what time did Warner get here? Well, it's marked right here. Uh, yeah, 
Signed in at 11.05. Well, was anyone around here asking for Warner this morning, either before or after 11? Nobody I saw, and I've been on duty since 8. But then anyone can get past me when I'm away from the desk. Well, is there anything else you can tell us? No, oh, that's it. All right, thanks. Get his name and address, Fred. Okay. Hi, fellas. Hi. Hi. Guy really got killed in there, huh? Shot, huh? He sure did, son. Having him self-esteem. Boom. Just like that. What time did you boys get here this morning? Oh, around 11.15. Guy says it'll be about five minutes before we can get in the steam room. The attendant? No. No, some other guy. He was standing right over there by the steam room door keeping us out. So we went and took a swim. Oh, what did he look like? I'd say it was about five, nine, ten. 160, maybe. Wouldn't you? Yeah, and he was wearing a dark gray suit. And he had a tan, real good tan. And he was pretty old, too. 50, maybe. Oh, and he, he has a mustache. Got that, Fred? Yeah, I'll get it right on the air. We better go down to the desk and have him send someone up to Warner's room to go in with us. Yeah. You stick around, fellas. We'll watch him down the hall, look at some mug shots. Yes, sir. Apparently, the hold on look out here the trigger man who was his partner in the job. It's funny no one saw the other guy. Yeah. You really didn't need me here, gentlemen. These rooms are never locked. Well, we'll be now until the coroner gets through with it. We'll have an officer stand by. Ben, customs report. The victim docked today on the Pacific Princess. Only one declared item, an antique Tang Dynasty horse, no stated value. Looks like Warner was quite a traveler. And nothing like the trip he just took. It's hollowed out just like the Dressler statue. If that thing was filled with dope, it'd be worth a million bucks. Well, that's why Warner was killed. Let's get the lab boys up here. Keep this door locked. Yes, sir. Now, remember, take your time. Just take your time and keep it impersonal. Do you understand? Okay, okay. Now. By 4.30, we'll be finished. You sound like a coach between halves. Just drive the car, Dipso. Didn't mean nothing. <laughs> you know, but would you mind if I were to buy just a little jug? Just take a belt once in a while. I don't want to get a heat on, I just... No. Uh... Did he have to kill that kid? When you live outside the law, you have to eliminate dishonesty. That kid, as you call him, made a deal and tried to shake us down. That's fundamentally dishonest, or he had to die. Besides, a dead man can't point at you. Your buddy gives me the creeps. What does he think, he's the only expert around here or something? If he continues to listen to me, he'll be the best. Yes? I'm Evans, from the ship. The one Mr. and Mrs. Sanders just... Well, they arrest him, uh, Mr. Evans. Would you like to leave your car? No, it's all right. I'd just as soon not get them involved in this anyway. Some mix-up down at the dock. Something about a set of flatware the Sanders brought in. Oh, yes. Please come in. This way, please. In the dining room, sir. Uh, we stopped to put it away. Well, I'm glad you didn't put it away yet. I may have to take this set back for an hour or two. Take it back? Someone else brought in a set exactly like this. They're claiming this is their set, while the one they're holding belongs to the Sanders. Well, I don't understand, sir. You know, like sometimes they get babies mixed up in a hospital. Oh, Mr. Saunders, a very precise person. I don't see how. Well, the shipping cartons are exactly alike. Maybe they got them mixed up down at the docks. Maybe they didn't. That's what we've got to find out. 
It's a routine matter. I'll take this stuff back and let the people satisfy themselves. Then I'll bring the right set back here. But I couldn't let you do that, sir. No? I must first ask Mr. Sander. But you said he was resting. You come back. Two hours. No, I can't. Those people are waiting there. You come back. Please. Put those back there. You go now. I ask Mr. Sonner when he wake up. Put him back. Sanders. Oh, I like that. It demonstrates his servility, his need for help, his dependence. That's very interesting. came in on the long non-stop flights are off duty. We've only located five out of 18. You run down anything else in that cab that Jenkins was driving? Yeah, I'm afraid not, Ben. It was stolen yesterday morning over at Lake Merritt in Oakland while the cabbie was having coffee. Dressler's stakeout comes up with nothing. It could be. He's clean. Better keep a tail on him, though, for his own protection. Right. For his own protection? Well, that was a sizable shipment of heroin. Those gunmen don't know we spotted it. They might write it off, or they might say a call on Dressler. You know, somewhere out there are a couple of hired gunmen in town to do a job. Maybe right now they're lining up that Smith & Wesson 38 on another target. Yeah, yes. I, um, I have something for her. Well, you better leave it at the desk or come back later because she's left. A little short on time, madam. Well, I heard her tell a little girl that they were going shopping and then to this Dinard Aquarium. The aquarium? Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. 
second killing involving someone who was aboard the Pacific Princess. Yeah, and there'll be more. There were more narcotics brought in and souvenirs. Do you know any way to run down a whole boatload of people and warn them in time? Well, about all we can do now is put out a supplemental web broadcast, notify all stations to be on the lookout for a cheek wood chest containing oriental flatware, possibly in the possession of the man previously described. There's not very much to go on. Oh, it's almost there, not bad. It's better before someone else gets killed. This is going to be a smooth one. A smooth one? That girl's not going to be as easy as the other two. Why not? All we have to do is get her back to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. That's all we got to do. Get her back to the hotel. Pardon me, miss. Weren't you on the Pacific Princess? Why, why, yes, I was. Just now I remember. My my friend and I, we saw you on board. Uh, we got on at Honolulu. We made a bet about you. Wondered if the little girl were your kid sister or your daughter. And how did you bet? Neither side. I said you were the daughter and she was really your mother. <laughs> <laughs> that's Cindy, my daughter. My name is Tom Evans. And that's my associate over there. His name is Tom also. Hope you forgive us for breaking in like this. We were just kind of taking in the sights, you know? Oh, he's okay. Is there just the two of you? Yes. Something's disturbing you. Why do you say that? I can see it in your eyes. They're almost sad. You're very discerning. Well, you haven't got a monopoly on sadness. Besides, why else would a lady like you be traveling alone with a daughter? Nobody likes to travel alone. No, nobody likes it. Now you sound bitter. That's something I thought I had a corner on. I guess I was hoping San Francisco would be an answer. That he'd be here after all. At least, if not for me, for our little girl, for Cindy. <laughs> but he didn't show up, did he? I mean, you are alone, aren't you? There wasn't even a message from him at the hotel. That's too bad. Here, I'm not making a very good impression on you. Let me take these packages. No, thank you, though, Mr. Evans. I didn't mean to. I know you didn't. No, I don't want you to get the idea that I was, well, um, trying to pick you up or something. Weren't you? I guess I was at that. Maybe I'm lonely, too. Not like me gets that way sometimes. Even in a crowd, all alone and lonely. It's easy to sell yourself that the world is black, Mr. Evans. What? I suppose they call it negative selling. I'm not a very good salesman. I was trying to do a job of positive selling with you. And what are you selling? Free transportation back to the hotel. For you, the little girl, and all these packages. We've got a car outside. What? Frankly, I am tired. Mr. Evans, you just made a sale. Good. Let me introduce you to my associate. Cindy? Now, this is my friend, Tom Gibbs. Hello, Cindy. We're going to drive back to the hotel with Mr. Evans. I've got a new car.
Richards. Well, here I go again. This time I have two characters with heavy tans. One of them fits the make we have on the air. But the other's dark, medium build. Uh -huh. They headed out of here in a 57 gray Plymouth sedan. License MTH889. The guy driving has medium complexion, blonde hair, bow tie, and no hat. And the other men are wearing gray hats. There were also a woman, about 30, and a child in the car. Right. Uh, I'll leave the packages now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you, you've been so kind. Won't you stay a moment? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Right. I'll put these in the other room and freshen up. Cindy, you entertain the gentleman. Yes, Mommy. Some doll, huh? Mommy got it for me in Tokyo. You got any other dolls in Tokyo? No, that's all. Pretty, isn't she? She's beautiful. That silk, pure silk. Do you know how they make silk? No. Suppose you tell us. Silkworms. Hmm? They make their beds and sleep when they wake up. That silk. Worms? Do you mean to say that worms made this? Oh, no. You the see doll. the worms. Uh, do you mind if I take it out? Oh, of course not. I had her out lots of times on the boat. Uh -huh. Go on, examine it. See what holds it together. See? She has all these petticoats. Only in Japan you don't call them petticoats. Mommy knows what they call them, but I forgot. Now this sticker, is that what holds it together? Does it go all the way up? Yes. It isn't here. down this second and get out of here. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Where is it? You found it, didn't you? Please, please leave us alone. We'll forget about the doll. Just leave us alone. A tired line you fed me. Thought I bought it, huh? I think I'm a patsy with good thing printed all over my face. <laughs> Honey, come on, think with me, huh? <laughs> see a package inside that doll? You tell me where your mother put it and I'll let her go, okay? You saw it. Okay, okay. I put it on my dolly's face. You want your mother to live, you tell me where it is. I'm telling you. That was a bag of powder under my dolly's dress. Yeah? Yeah, well, where's it now? I used it on the boat. You used it? To powder my dolly's face. Kid, nobody ever used a more expensive dusting powder. Mr. Evans. Think, Mr. Evans. If you do what you have in mind, then what follows? They crossed us, didn't they? What else is there to do? Us, Mr. Evans. You and me. 
If you do this, you'll put us right in the dead letter drop. Remember the man, he'll want an accounting. He'll want to ask questions about the missing stuff. But we'll tell him. Maybe he won't believe us. It's worth a fortune. Maybe he'll think we tried to cut ourselves in on part of the action. Yeah. Yeah, I see. But not if they tell him. Then we're clear. We're free. We can sleep nights. We can walk down dark streets. We can stand on busy intersections at high noon. Now, you had to do what you did to Warner and to the house boy, I but... to kill them, too. No. No, what do you mean? No. no. Not if the lady's wise enough to follow our instructions explicitly. Not if she's wise enough to walk quietly out of this room into the elevator and down through the lobby. Are you that wise? I hope so, for the sake of you both. Oh, yes. I'll do whatever you say. I'm personally very pleased with your decision, because in my profession there's one thing I dislike, and that's hearing someone's last words. You know, famous last words. Be firm with him, you understand? What happened wasn't our fault. We performed on the contract. You worry too much. I'm fine, see? The man don't scare me. I'll bring him back here. You tell him what happened to the stuff. Another thing, be careful. You think I can't take him or something? Sure, you can take him. It's what he represents that you can't take, not even you. They'd catch up with us someday, someplace. Keep thinking of that. Play it easy, remember? At 4.30, we'll be all finished and gone. Hello, Spaglin, show place. West of the Rockies.
license. M. Mary T. Tom H. Henry 889, the gray 57 Plymouth Sedan, parked in front of Sutro's Museum. Occupants, males, one woman, and one child. Now, fitting the description. Keep under surveillance, but make no attempt to apprehend the occupants. They are armed and dangerous. We're sending help. KMA 438. Attention all cars, vicinity Sutro's Museum. Richmond three-wheeler now has car under surveillance. Richmond two and four respond. All motorcycle officers in vicinity respond. Inspectors 32 respond. All units rendezvous with inspectors 32 who will be in charge. No sirens. Inspectors 32, we're rolling. when he brings this man back? What happens afterwards? What kind of men are you? See you cry. That's why women have no place in society. Women are weak. Crime's aggressive, and so is the law. Ordinary people of your class, you don't understand a criminal's need for violence. You're sick. Shut up. Okay. Yeah, but I wish your buddy would hurry up. Mister? Can you fix it? It's busted. What's busted? This. Now look, if you turn this, you can see the numbers, see? I want to kid, he was a push. The stuff was right there in the horse. Sanders, no problem either. The houseboy had it all laid out for me. The Bradshaw dame and her kid, that's where the job went to pieces. Kid used the stuff as dusting powder for a doll. <laughs> it's all gone. How about that, crazy kid? But Julian and I figured you'd never stand for a short count. I know we wouldn't. So what else could I do but get to you? I don't have all the stuff, but the rest of it is here. Yeah. Listen, I just want to get Julian and me off the hook with you. Well, you talk to that dame and her kid, they're right outside. They'll tell you how it was. And Julian and I are blown. You want me to help you, I'll be glad to. Julian and I don't want no beef with you. 
We didn't plan on that kid using that stuff to powder a dolly's nose. When you got goofed up like that, I couldn't drop a short shipment without some explanation, could I? Could I? All right, children, time to go. There's lots more to see. Are you gonna say anything? You're dead. Mister? Mister? Thank you. Come on, Janet. Dad, what do you mean, dead? I told you how it was. They're right. That's the truth. Nobody ever sees me. That's going to make you dead. Maybe you'll make it to the airport. Maybe you won't. But your time is borrowed. You're dead. Now get out! <laughs> First car beyond the bus. Remember, there's a woman and child in that car. Better notify communications we're here. Yes, sir. Plymouth Sedan, license M. Mary T. Thomas H. Henry 889. Last seen heading east on Seal Rock Road. All cars in the vicinity of Seacliff. Watch for suspect car proceeding in your direction. Alert Highway Patrol, vicinity, Golden Gate Bridge. Notify Military Police, Presidio. There she is.
think I'll race for this job. We can pedal this stuff for a mint. I told you how to handle it. What went wrong? I came on just like you said, real easy. I told him what happened. But I tried to sell it, but he wouldn't buy it. That's all. That's all? You put us in the deep freeze, and then you say that's... Look out! That's all. <laughs> what else is there? It happened. Well, maybe I should cry? Maybe it's not too late. Maybe I could see the man and I could explain it. <laughs> he won't hear you. Not him. Not after what I told you had happened to us. Maybe you want to go back and look at what's left of him on that ice. He pushed me too far! <laughs> so I pushed him just far enough. Get us out. You got us in, now you get us out! You're trying to kill us! I see we got two choices. Either we get killed by this jerk, or we stop and shoot it out. <laughs> you want to stop and shoot it out, Julian? I... You know I never fired a gun in my life. Then call it! From here on in, I'm running this show. Me. You're in the back seat. That's where you stay. It's okay though, I gotta hide out of warehouse in Folsom. Vectors 32 following suspect car east on 4 Scott Road. Get us out fast. Okay, you see, we're in luck. There's a freeway just ahead. Are you stupid? Thing the man in the wheelchair said. Now get out. Was that for the book, Julian? No, Dancer. No. And just before that. <laughs> <laughs>
get better with the tellin', but James River Smithfield Barbecue gets better with the eaten. At Smithfield, we still use the same famous recipe of herbs and spices. Our barbecue is still slow simmered in our secret sauce to perfection. And just like always, James River Smithfield Barbecue is good enough to be a great snack, hearty enough to fill a pioneer's appetite. You'll understand why John Smith stayed in old Virginia. One of the best things about this tradition is we make it quick and easy for you. Be sure to visit our concession stand now for James Rivers Smithfield Barbecue. seem to have any fear of the chair? Not at all. Totally unconcerned. Say, what? Doesn't seem to care apart. That airplane's around again. Flying lower than usual today. He's directly overhead. Did anyone get the number? There's no number on it. No number? No. That's rather Say, odd. That, that might make a good story. Oh, I don't believe so. It's just someone cruising around here. Well, Sam Crandall, he'll make a story out of it. Hello? Warden's office? You say everything's in readiness for the execution? Thank you. Operator. 
4,000. Hello, give me Sam Crandall. No, Crandall. Ah, uh, Callahan speaking. You're on the air now, Chief. This is Chief Murphy speaking. The Phantom is supposed to be somewhere here in the city. He is a most desperate criminal, a killer, a human tiger. Take no chances and shoot to kill. Yes, Mike. Well, that's fine. All right, then shoot it through, just the way we had it lined up. Yeah. All right, hurry it up. Hello, Mr. Crandall. Well, Winters. What can I do for the law? Well, I want to see Miss Hampton. Why? The report has reached headquarters that the Phantom is out to get her father, the DA. Hampton had nothing to do with sending him up. I know. But we've been tipped off. He feels our district attorney's office responsible for his conviction. Oh, I see. Well, she's out right now covering a society wedding, but she'll be back in a few minutes. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Thanks. Yeah? I guess you know me. I'm Pat Collins from headquarters. Well, how are you, Sergeant? Well, what can I do for you? The chief has detailed me to act as your bodyguard until I can capture the Phantom. I guess you know he's made threats against your life. Well, that may explain this. Well, that makes it a whole lot easier for me. Providing you're willing to meet him. Why not? If I can count on you for a little cooperation. Ah, don't you worry, Mr. Hampton. Just leave that guy to me. The court will now come to order. I expect you at 11 o'clock. You better make a 10. I want to be sure he won't get away. Well, the chief's orders, Miss Hampton. He must accompany you everywhere. All right. But I think it's silly. Imagine your society reporter being guarded by handsome officers everywhere she goes. It's more winter. You better get out your soup and fish because Miss Hampton's covering the embassy ball tonight. Well, I hardly think it'll be necessary for me to attend. However, I'll be there. Yes? Are you sure? We'll get right up to my office then. We'll lay this whole thing out. All right. What? Your boyfriend. Hello. Why, well, sure I do. I mean, I'm not quite so sure about that. Well, of course I do, silly. I was only fooling. Pardon me. I'm very sorry, but if you don't mind, this is my private line. I'd like to keep it open. Yes, come up right away. Are you in love with this fellow, Ruth? Yes, Sam. Why do you ask? Why do I ask? Surely, Ruth, you have some idea how I feel toward you. Don't you know I love you, Ruth? Why, Sam. I didn't realize that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right, Luke. Have you told your... or let your father in on the secret? Uh, no, not yet. 
We were waiting for Dick to make good before I told him about it. Why? Well, you see, this is Dick's first job. And it isn't very much of a position. Well, we were rather waiting on you. Oh. So, if I give Dick the job, why, you and he will be married. All right, Ruth, please get busy on that society waiting right up right away. I'll see what can be done for Dick. Oh, thank you, Sam. It's all right. You better take this gun. How long have you had that butler? Well, only a short time, but he came very highly recommended. Hey, you! What's your name? James. James. Come clean, what's your real name? Where did you work last? You get in your room and stay there. I'll see you later. Hey, that guy ain't no regular butler. He's lying to me, but don't you worry while I'm around. Thanks. Have you inspected the upper part of the house? Why, I was just going to do that. Now, you keep cool, and remember, I'll be right upstairs. What in the world are you doing?
thought it was what? The Phantom, sir. I heard of how he's coming here tonight, sir. Now run upstairs and lock yourself in Miss Ruth's room and be calm. Yes, sir. I'll go, sir. Why, don't be silly. That's only Collins, the detective. Now go on up to your room. It's impossible for him to approach the house without being caught. Now you just trot on in there and make yourself comfortable. I'll stand by the hall door. Expecting someone, Mr. Hampton? Sit down, Mr. Hampton. I want to have a little talk with you. your hands. <laughs> Don't get excited, Mr. Hampton. That gun's not loaded. I have a little proposition I want to offer you. You'll excuse me a minute. Thank you, Mr. Winters. Well, the pleasure has been mine, Miss Hampton. 
And I suppose you'll be here to guard me on the way to the office in the morning. Yes, indeed I will. What time would you care to leave? Oh, I suppose about nine o'clock. Well, I'll be here with pleasure. I wouldn't push so hard on that button, Mr. Hampton. It's been disconnected. Wait a minute. What's your name? Shorty. You're the chauffeur, huh? Yeah, and I know a flat tire when I see one. Hey, you trying to kid me? Oh, no. Daddy, what are you doing up so late? I have a good deal on my mind tonight. Oh, no. I'm serious. I'll see you at breakfast. All right, but remember, don't stay up too late. You know this is way past your bedtime. in the world is the matter with you? Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, dear. You're always afraid of something. Haven't I told you there's nothing to be frightened of in our own home? But I don't like this place. I wish we were back in our dear old home. Oh, Lucy, don't be absurd. Well, Mr. Hampton, let's get down to business. Well, you want to see the Phantom in jail, and I, I want to... I'd have to ask you to step out in the hall a minute. Hurry up! You don't mean he's in the house? Yes, he's in here. Are you sure you saw him in this room? Why, certainly I am. There's his hat. Central. Hello, Central.
Hey, who are you anyway? Men. Well, who'd you say was here? The Phantom. <laughs> well, what is it, dear? Tell me. What happened? It was terrible. Oh, Daddy. I heard Lucy fall, then the door opened, and this terrible thing crept out. What terrible thing? What? Oh! Well, hello, Sam. What? Honey, close that door, will you please? You do it. Oh, no. You're stronger than I am. I, I, I can't move. You close. Are you quite sure you didn't see his face? Oh, no. I didn't see his face. All I saw were these terrible fingers, those claws clutching at my throat as if he was going to strangle me. I know, but you always make me do all the work. <sighs> oh! oh. Mm. Oh! <sighs> Hampton, it looks like you've got your phantom. Oh, nonsense. How did this happen? Well, you see, sir, I had an occasion to go in there, and before I could resist, I was seized, bound, and gagged. Are you telling the truth? Oh, why, of course, sir. I wouldn't be so sure of that. I've known men to tie themselves up. Why, don't be silly. No man can tie knots on his own wrists like that. Go to your room, James. I'll see you presently. Very good, sir. Oh, Daddy, if you don't mind, I think I'll go to bed. Yes, of course, dear. You run right along. Good night. Good night. Good night, Ruth. Oh, good night, Sam. Hampton, I wouldn't be so sure of this man's innocence. His face is very familiar to me. It couldn't have been a ghost you saw, Hampton. Either that or people walk in and out through the walls of my house. Well, that's pretty hard to believe. Yes. Don't cry, honey. Well, I want to cry. <laughs> I wish, I wish I'd never come here into this spooky old place. Why be afraid? Ain't I here? It's the same. When we're married, I'm not going to live in this awful place. Don't be absurd. I tell you, he was here. He was... Put up your hand! They are 
got him, eh, boys? So you're the Phantom. So it would have to be you. Say, what's the matter with you birds, huh? Well, what are you waiting for? Put the cuffs on him. Just a minute. There's been a mistake here, Mr. Hampton. What do you mean, a mistake? Why, this man is Dick Mallory, one of my reporters. A reporter? Hey, what do you mean, coming into my house like this? Well, my chief will have to explain that to you, Mr. Hampton. I'm here to locate the Phantom. Hey, Collins. Come on, I'll show you how that bird got out of here, through the secret stairway. Well, Mr. Hampton, I suppose you'd like to know what this is all about. I certainly would. I'd be very glad to explain it to you. Thanks. Sit down. Careful now, man. I think I know where he is. You do? Do you know a doctor by the name of Walden? Walden? The, Walden. the only Dr. Walden I know is that old quack that has a sanitarium out on Country Drive. I'll bet that's the place. Why do you say that? Well, when the Phantom was in my room, he kept muttering something about what a wonderful subject I'd make for uh, Dr. Walden's experiment. Experiments? I think I'll go out there and let him experiment on me. Well, I'm going with you. All right, we'll sneak out of here and take your car. What kind of a place does Dr. Weldon have? It was used as a private insane asylum until the doctor disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. Don't you remember that they found the body of a murdered girl in his yard? Oh, is that the place? Even that doesn't explain why this man should break into my house in this manner. Well, you see, he had rather a personal reason for wanting to scoop this story. A personal reason? Yes. Well, he's been secretly engaged to your daughter. Engaged to Ruth? Yes. The fact of the matter is, I rather unwittingly aided their romance. Well, why should you do that? Because I wanted to see Ruth happy. Even though I'd hope someday to be able to make her my wife. Now, Sam, that wouldn't have hurt my feelings a bit. Dick, are you sure this is the right place? Oh! oh. What's the matter? Why, something touched me. What are you doing here? Just hiding. Why, Lucy, what are you hiding from? The phantom? 
Yeah, we got scared in the house and got in here to hide. Before we could get out, why you run away with us? Well, do you know where you're going now? No. Oh. Just where we hope to find the family. Oh. Oh. Hey, gate man, open up that gate. Dr. Wallen expects us. Hurry up. excuse will we give for being here this hour of the night? I'll tell you. You pretend to faint, and I'll carry you in. That'll give us a reason for calling on the doctor. All right. Catch me. Hey, Shorty. You and Lucy go and open the door. And remember, Miss Hampton's unconscious. All right. With me here? Hey, Shorty. Take a look around here and see if you can't find somebody. Huh? Go on upstairs and see if you can't find somebody. There must be somebody around here. Hurry up. You're going with me. Oh, no, not, not me. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, Shorty. Oh, come on. You, you don't need to be afraid. Why, I, I, I'm here, and I can... Uh, Did you hear something? No. You, you didn't hear that? Say, listen. We've got to find somebody. You holler. Hello? Somebody? You better be quick out. I'm coming. You better, better, better look out of here. I'm coming, I am. Doesn't seem to be anybody around here. There surely must be somebody in the place. Well, I suppose you want to see Dr. Belden. Well, yes. Uh, could I see him right away? Yeah, sure. Just a minute. Come right in here. I know, but how about... Oh, she's all right. She'll be all right. Come on, it's right in here. Come on. I think the doctor will see you all right. Shh. 
Put them in. You know what kind of a place you in here? No. Then this here is a crazy house. Crazy house? Yes, sure. There's three tools and three hundred feet of way we go back with the van here. What would you, you, you say his last name was? Hey, you see, you don't understand. There's seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven seasick men here, and they're all crazy but me. Oh. Well, what are you doing here? Well, that's just it. You see, Dr. Weldon here, he knows that I've got plenty of money. And what he's trying to do now is to get my money. You know, my son, he is the governor of this here state. Oh, you don't say so. Yeah, sure. If you go see my son, and you tell him that I'm in here, and he'll come and get me out, I will give you one hundred thousand dollars. Well, boy, I'll sure do that. The minute I get out of here, I'll telephone him. That will be fine. Hey, what'd you do that for? I used to remind us so you shouldn't forget. I forget. Come in here, Dr. Velda, this here now. Come here, Dr. Velda, this here. Yeah, this is Dr. Velden. Oh, pardon. I was deeply engrossed in this treatise on the transplanting of the human brain. An operation that hasn't as yet been attempted, but I shall do it. I shall be the first. Let me explain it to you. see by making an opening here and one here then transplanting the cell from this side of the brain to this we are able to change the entire disposition of the patient well that's all very well doctor but I have urgent need for your services well, my dear boy what's the matter well you see we were eloping and my bride-to-be has been overcome by excitement she's unconscious <laughs> oh that's that my boy uh, you mustn't worry Young brides are always nervous. But uh, where is the young lady? Oh, you should come out here, Doctor. You should come out here. <laughs> Who brings it up there? Doctor. Oh, and uh, this is the charming little bride, I presume. 
No, that's not her. What'd you do with her? What? What do you mean? Well, that's not Ruth. Where is she? Why, boy, I don't hey, understand. Hey, listen here. Listen, if I don't find her, I'll tear this place down and you with it, understand? But, my boy, how could I know anything of your sweetheart? I'll find her anyway. Hey, Ruth! 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 Oscar, can't you see the young lady has fainted? Bring her a glass of water. Yes, sir, Dr. Dunlevin. Get the glass of water, yes, sir. Yeah, I've got to hold it off, sir. Marvelous subject. A marvelous subject. Alpha. We need to see. Get my book. We. <laughs> you remember this patient, Alphonse? Uh, oui, monsieur, doctor. A wonderful operation. Oui. Too bad it turned out as it did. Mm. Does Monsieur Doctor intend the same operation on Mademoiselle? Yes, I think I will. Though well, my nerves are rather unsteady. I haven't practiced for several months. Oh, monsieur, doctor. Alphonse, oui. the book. Yes. Oh, Ruth!
say that. You dropped something. I, I what? I. Nutty, nutty. Don't you know the doctor don't want you out here a cold night like this? There ought to be a spring or something around here that releases it. Oh. What's the matter? Phantom went through there. Went through where? Through there. It's a secret door. A secret? Let's phone the police. Come on. Come, hurry up. Take it, Shorty. the police station. Right. Well, call up the house. Collins and his men are there. Oh, hello. Oh. Uh, hello. Albany, 9807. Yes. Well, there's no use in my waiting any longer, Hampton. He's not going to show tonight. Oh, I guess you're right, Sam. Hello? Hello. Hello, Mr. Hampton. This is Lucy. What's that? Hey, where are you? Huh? Where are we? We're in Dr. Walden's sanitarium. In Dr. Walden's sanitarium? On Country Club, on the Country Road. Yes. Oh, and, and Mr. Hampton, we got the Phantom here. You see, they've got the Phantom. What's that? What's that? They got the Phantom. They got... They've got the Phantom at Walden's sanitarium. You know where that is? Oh, sure, sure. You stay right where you are. I'll be out there at once with the officers. Now, wait a minute. That may be just another gag. You stay here, and I'll leave a couple of men to guard you. Now, don't worry. I'll take care of that. Hey, boys! Come here! Hey, it's stop it. Come on with me. Come on, fellas. The car's out the other drive. Be right with you, Colin. I've got a hunch there's no stall in this, Hampton. Well, I'd like to go with you, but I don't want to leave Ruth alone in the house. So phone me the moment you get there, will you? All right. I suppose she wants to get in there. Yes, can you open it? Yeah, sure. Well, hurry up. Open it. You see this, heaven? Yes. That ain't the one. Well, which one is the one? You, you see this, heaven? Yes, yes. That ain't the one either. <laughs> oh, come on, Slim. Be a good fella. Open it up for me, will you? Well, you ain't been such a bad fella, I guess, so. You know, that reminds me of a very, very funny little story. Oh, come on, Slim. Have a heart. Did you ever hear the story of the Yak and Yill? Yes, yes, I've heard it, but you can tell it to me tonight. Come on, open that up, will you? I'm in a hurry. Stay where you are. Well, I guess that's all right. Uh, you shouldn't be in such a big hurry. Well, I am. Hurry up, will you? Well, you see that hair? Yes. Well, if you turn it like that, you see, and, and pull, and it won't open. Oh, but if you push it, 
Say like that? Yes. And then, Pearl, say that if it's open. You go out and wait for the police. I'm going upstairs and help them. Oh, no, no, Shorty, you'll get hurt. What? Don't. With this? <coughs> Come on, boys, let's see what's up here. Take him out of here. No, no. There's another two in there for you, Collins. Put the irons on him, boys. Oh, where's my shorty? Shorty? Here, where are you going? Oh, you let me go. My shorty's up there. You all right, honey? Oh, Dick. Yes, I'm all right. Oh, what I see. Oh, shorty. Oh, shorty. Oh, baby. Are you hurt? Oh, oh baby. Oh, shorty. Oh, what I No weapons, eh? Nah, he's all right. He's harmless. We ought to make the headlines for this, eh? Scrantle? Why? Ain't I got the phantom? Tough luck, Collins. Our supposed doctor is the phantom. You got to prove that to me. That is very easily done, gentlemen. That is the phantom. Yes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, looks like we're going to get the story after all, doesn't it? Let's telephone it in. All right. Maine, 4,000. Just a minute, Ruth. Please. Hello, give me Mike. Mike Crannell speaking. Break that phantom story just as I had it laid out. Credit Dick Mallory. Certainly make it an extra. All right, step on it. Well, <laughs> I guess that gets you your raise, Dick. 
From now on, you'll be our star reporter. Thanks, boss. And I wonder if it'd be asking too much if I got a couple of weeks vacation with it. Don't you like to work? Oh, sure, but... Well, you see... We got a little matrimonial business we got to look after. Is that what you want, Ruth? Yes, Sam. You little fellas ever hear that story about Jack and you? And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.